How's it going, everybody? Welcome in to another episode of the Math Step Back Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Trigg. You can find me, as always, on Twitter, or X, formerly known as Twitter, at Dalton underscore Trigg. Today, uh, I've got a uh, just a bonus pod for you guys, because we have uh, some big news. We finally got uh, that Dirk Nowitzki Hall of Fame uh, enshrinement shirt up and running. I'm taking pre-orders for it now. Uh, so if you're interested in getting one of those, you know, I was I went to Dirk's Hall of Fame ceremony uh, in Springfield, Massachusetts. Great time up there. Uh, you know, all of you who have followed me throughout the years, I mean, even before I got into, uh, you know, Mavs media stuff, Dirk has just meant so much to me over the years. Uh, he's been uh, – kind uh to both me and my wife you know well before any of this media stuff happened it was you know it was stuff he didn't even have to do so i mean uh he's meant so much to me it was natural uh for me to just try and find some way no matter how small uh to give back and the the best way i found to do that uh given where i live and everything would be to do a t-shirt front fundraiser so What we are going to do here, let me pull up my screen. Okay, so this is what we're doing. Uh, We are selling these, or I'm selling these uh, Dirt and Whiskey Hall of Fame inspired comfort color t-shirts. So, I mean, if y'all have had comfort color t-shirts before, you know how comfortable and durable they are. Uh, The design is my original design. Uh, Shout out to... Tyler Upchurch, who has done a bunch of great math stuff and just overall NBA everything. I mean, he even outside of the NBA, he does a great amount of uh, graphic design stuff. He helped me refine uh, that original logo ID there. So idea there. So shout out to him. All these shirts are going to be uh, $28 a piece. Uh, there's no limit to how many you can get. If you want to get some just for yourself, you want to get some uh, for the whole f- for the whole family. If you want it to be a present for a upcoming birthday or Christmas or whatever, doesn't matter. Just let me know. Uh, you can either, uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you can either reply to this tweet I'm showing on the screen here. Uh, if you're not watching on YouTube, uh, just go to my Twitter page at Dalton underscore Trig. It's my pinned tweet. Either reply to that tweet or send me a direct message on there. Or if you don't get on Twitter, you can email me too, uh, Dalton at MavStepBack.com, and I will get your information, uh, however many you want, what sizes you need, where you want me to uh, mail the shirts to, and then, you know, the payment details. So basically... Uh, whatever the shipping is included in this. So however many shirts you want, $28 times, however, how many shirts, and you can either PayPal me that, or you can, uh, Venmo either PayPal or Venmo is how I, how I take that. So, uh, if you're interested, be sure to, you know, jump on this because the pre-order process, I'm going to keep this open for about a week. Uh, and then before the season actually starts on October, uh, 25th for the Mavs, I'm going to go ahead and place the, the first batch of these pre-orders. And, you know, we'll we'll reopen it at another time, too. Uh, this is something that, you know, I don't want to put a cap on. Uh, but just for this first order, it's going to go uh, for about a week, a little over a week. And then we'll stop it, uh, get the first batch of pre-orders in, get those shipped out to y'all. But uh, like I said, I mean, look, I, this was – this is something I've been wanting to do uh, even before uh, I went to to Dirk's Hall of Fame enshrinement. And, you know, it took a it took a little while for me to to get the design exactly how I wanted. And uh, like I mentioned with my guy, Tyler Upchurch, we had to refine it a little bit and uh, inside the numbers there. So the shirt itself, you can see it, you know, it says basketball royal, royalty. It has Springfield, Massachusetts, August 12th. 2023 at the bottom and then you have a silhouette of Dirk doing his signature fadeaway in the middle and then in the background the number 41 it's got all of his career accomplishments 
uh, inside that number 41. So uh, just it's a great shirt, in my opinion. I've already gotten me a couple uh, coming my way, too, and uh, there have been several pre-orders. I just I just posted this this morning, and we, we already have a handful of pre-orders. So I just wanted to put that on y'all's radar. Uh, just do a bonus pod to let y'all know about this because I, I you know I'm not naive. I know people don't keep up with me uh, on Twitter 24 seven. So if you're somebody who listens to this pod but you don't get on Twitter or you know if you just li- if you watch us on YouTube and uh, you know all that kind of stuff and this is your way of finding out. I just wanted to make sure this reaches you know every part of our au- audience here. So uh, I've got Twitter covered. I've got our Facebook page covered and all of our followers there. And so now we'll have, uh, you know, the main pod and and our YouTube audience as well. So be sure to let me know. Uh, I check my email religiously. I check all my replies and DMS on there. So don't hesitate to reach out to me. I will get back with you and we will get you one of these shirts if you want one. So thanks guys. Appreciate it. All right. So, uh, now that we've gotten that part out of the way, I do want to talk about the Mavs a little bit while I'm here uh, because we've had some news happen today. Uh, the first thing is, so over the weekend, Friday, the Mavs waived three players, uh, and that included uh, Jelly Walker, who was on an Exhibit 10 contract. He was hoping to be elevated up to a two-way. That just didn't happen. Uh, and then uh, Mike Miles Jr., a TCU product. He was actually on a two-way contract and the Mavs waived him as well. So he's gone. Uh, Joe Weiskamp, I think I said it, that name right. He was waived as well. Well, today, Monday, uh, the Mavs signed Taze Moore, who was a summer league standout. Maybe not as far as his averages, you know, his stats and everything, but his energy is contagious. Uh, he's uh, he's kind of like a Swiss Army knife. He can do a little bit of everything. He's older. You know, he's around 25 years old, and he's had a bunch of injuries throughout his career. He's had to overcome a lot, you know, just to get to the point where he's at now. But uh, they have brought him back on an Exhibit 10 contract, and he'll be competing for one of the Mavs' remaining two-way spots. They have two left now. A.J. Lof- AJ Lawson has one of them, and, you know, he looks like he's improved a good bit. Uh, since last season so that's encouraging he has the one spot and he kept his throughout this training camp but now the Mavs have two and they have uh, they have Greg Brown they have Dexter Dennis and now they have Taze Moore uh, competing for those last two two two-way spots as we reach the end of preseason here the Mavs will have their final preseason game against the Detroit Pistons on Friday and then next week we get this thing rolling for real uh, it's it's been a long off season. It's been a fun off season, but man, is it going to be good to have real Mavs basketball back again? It's it gives me chills just thinking about it. You know, uh, the NBA. It's like there's never really a true off season. It goes year round now, uh, but there's just nothing quite like things getting ramped up again. And you know, from from now until hopefully June. You know, I don't want to don't want to make any outrageous predictions, but you know, from now until then, we're going to have Mavs basketball, and it's going to be great. I can't wait for it. Redemption season. There's a lot of people in the national media that are doubting the Mavs, and that's warranted. I'm not mad at them. You know, the Mavs have you know earned that uh, that doubt based on how they ended last year. But there's a lot of new pieces. There's a lot of new talent. Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic are, you know, they're having their first full season together, you know, instead of just it being a mid-season trade and uh, having to learn things on the fly and everybody just rushing things, you know, it's not going to be like that this time. They've had a full off season together and uh, it's, it's going to be fun. I think the Mavs are in for a really big bounce back season. And I know people don't feel that way right now, but, you know, we'll just have to see how it goes. I mean, I feel like the Mavs are overdue for a good start to the season. 
You know, it, it seemed in, in the first two years of uh, Jason Kidd's tenure as Mavs head coach, you've had mixed res- mixed end results because the first year they obviously went to the Western Conference Finals. The second year they didn't even make the play-in tournament. So, you know, uh, two polar opposite seasons. But one thing that has been consistent with Kidd is that his teams tend to get off to slow starts. Uh Just for example, those first two seasons, after the 30-game mark, so like when it got to game 31 uh, for each of the first two seasons, the Mavs were at or under 500 (laughs) for both both of those seasons. So, uh, you know, the first year they were able to shake that off and got extremely hot in the second half of the season. And a lot of that was due to the play of Jalen Brunson and the team's overall chemistry and the defense was locked in. You know, there was a lot of reasons for that. Just had just really good vibes all around. So the idea is that now that you have Kyrie Irving for a full season, not just the end of last year, and you've had a full offseason to prepare, uh, and you've added better defensive pieces that you didn't have last year, like Grant Williams, uh, you have a very promising young rookie big man in Derek Lively, who is probably going to be your d- day one starter at center. And I get it. He's a rookie. He's still got a lot to learn. But if you look at where he was at in preseason, not preseason, in summer league compared to where he is now, and you see the growth he's had, not just physically, but, you know, the way everybody around the Mavs talks about him, you know, there was some questions at first, but now it's like they have supreme confidence in him. Uh, so that has a lot to do uh, – that says a lot about his character, says a lot about his ability to learn on the fly and apply that to his game, even if he's only 19 years old. It says a lot about Tyson Chandler, who has taken Lively under his wing since day one. Uh, and, you know, that's obviously made uh, a big difference for him, too. He, uh, Lively told us uh, when he came on this pod during the summer that he had never been coached by another big man before. This is the first time ever in his career he's been coached by a guy that's, you know, seven foot tall and has actually been in the shoes that Lively's trying to be in now. So that's huge for him. And, you know, it's happy. I'm happy to see Lively start to see the fruits of his labor early. That doesn't mean he's going to be perfect this year. I'm sure there's going to be some valuable rookie learning experiences, but the Mavs overall are in a much better place than they were last year. Luca and Kyrie together, you know, they're going to be healthy by opening night. Uh, and then you've got Grant Williams, you've got Lively, Omax Prosper who, you know, might not be uh, ready to go as we – might not be as ready to go as we thought from day one, but still has a bunch of uh, potential. And then you have Derek Jones Jr., uh, Dante Exum, Rashawn Holmes might pitch in a little bit. Uh, There's just a lot to look forward to this season, and I'm excited that it's about to all get rolling. So – um, be sure to stay tuned to DallasBasketball.com. We have a lot of stuff coming up. Our guy Grant Afseth is at the practices uh, this week, bringing you all the uh, the beat, you know, the heartbeat of the Mavs, what's going on after all these practices. We've got other stories up on the site right now as well. We've got a roundtable coming here soon with our full uh, DallasBasketball.com staff that, uh, that's going to have us talking about you know, our predictions for this season, where we think the Mavs are going to stack up in the West uh, after all these moves have been made during the offseason. So, uh, surprise, surprise, uh, I'm very high on the Mavs. (laughs) I'm not going to spoil it, you know, because I do want you to read it. Uh, But uh, I'm a lot higher on the Mavs standing in this Western Conference um, compared to where my other DallasBasketball.com co-workers are at during this round table. So uh, stay tuned for that. And we'll, you know, I, I think you'll like where I have them at and my reasoning behind, I'm not just being like irrationally optimistic. I know some of you might think that, but I do have, 
you know, some rational reasoning for my prediction too. So uh, be sure to stay, stay tuned for that. And let me know what y'all think too. When I post it, you know, y'all give me y'all's predictions too. And, and, you know, tell me where I'm wrong or uh, who you agree with, who you don't agree with. So guys, I appreciate it. Thanks for coming in for this uh, short bonus pod today. Uh, can't wait to get things rolling with y'all full time and, you know, give the, uh, uh, you know, all those game recap pods and all that a go again. And we appreciate it. Y'all give us a review on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Y'all have been great uh, all off season, And uh, we can't thank you enough for all the continued support that you've given uh, this podcast over the years. So thanks, guys. Y'all have a great one. We will see you next time.